Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Mom Hour. I am Sarah Powers here with Megan Francis for a really fun Sunday More Than Mom episode. Megan, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this one because I feel like it's been a while since we've done a truly fluffy product episode, hasn't it? Yeah, we did. We did a product More Than Mom episode, I don't know, in like May. So it hasn't been that long, but we don't do as many More Than Mom episodes in the summer. I almost felt a little rusty. when I was leading us into our intro, like, what do we even say? How does this work? What do I say? Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely been a while. And if you're new around here, uh, more than mom episodes are about more than just parenting and motherhood. So we cover all kinds of things like just fun, fluffy, silly pop culture, books, movies, music, um, and products when we want to talk about products. And today we give full credit for this episode idea to Katie on our team who suggested we do a producty episode featuring our empties. And Megan, did you even know what empties were like in social media land when Katie brought this up? Were you familiar? Not really. Okay. No, I mean, I guess it's kind of self-explanatory, right? But no, I was not familiar with this trend. So I was only like, I think Jamie Golden is the one I have watched do empties. And so listeners, if you are similarly just catching up, I think this comes from like beauty influencer, social media culture, where it's very common to hop on and be like, oh my gosh, guys, I just got this new face cream and I love it. Yada, yada. Like we've all seen that, but often that's at the beginning of trying a new product. And the idea behind empties is when an influencer or just a normal person gets on and shows you the products they have used all the way to the very last drop, because in theory, especially if you work in the, in an industry where you are given products to try, you're going to try them all. That's not revelatory. But if you use them to the last drop, then that sort of suggests that they were really good. And so talking about what products we have used all the way up and in many cases even bought more of, we thought would be a fun way to talk about some skincare and makeup and beauty products that we have loved lately. And then we're also going to like broaden that a little bit um, and talk about products that we love so much we have bought more or would buy more, even if we don't like have an empty container to show for it. So I have to share that when, when you first mentioned empties, I, um, perhaps misunderstood and thought we were literally going to be talking about things where we've kept the empties. And that really spoke to my heart because I have a weird hang up about throwing away like good containers. I think it came from my mom. She was very into reusing things. Yeah. And not like a hoarder. She didn't buy a lot of new stuff, but like if there was like a really good jar or Mm -hmm. a really good box or whatever, it got reused. Yeah. But you know, at some point you will run out of purposes for jars. Like there will, 
you will not have anything left to do with them. So I have a couple of products that I regularly run out of um, that have very nice packaging. Um, skincare, we'll talk about, I'll give the specifics later, and some tea tins and things like that. And I'll find myself hanging on to the empties because I'm like, well, maybe there's something else I can do with it. And so now I have all these beautiful empties like and I haven't and figured boxes. out. Tins yeah, I did and, that yeah. to some degree. Do you ever purchase something because the container is so pretty, you know, you'll use the container after I have done that. Usually it's like not an expensive product, but like at the grocery store at Trader Joe's, I'll be like, Ooh, I really like the oh, yeah. shape of that jelly jar. Costco. I've yeah. bought things like in Costco. Yeah. Go. Like the time I bought the huge jar of peaches. Yeah. I don't even know if we ate the peaches, but I did use, I'm using that jar actively right now. So <laughs> really there you funny. go. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to kick it off. And like I said, we're going to start with the more traditional empties. So mostly from our bathroom counters, skincare, makeup, beauty products. And then as we move on, we'll move a little bit away from um, that concept and just broaden it to talk about, yeah, stuff we love so much that we have bought more or used it all up or would buy more. So what is your first empty, Megan? So this is the one where I would have to say the most ubiquitous empty of all that is in my life would be lip balm tubes. Okay. I'm a serious lip balm addict and I have been since I was like in high school. And I'm pretty, I'll try any lip balm once or twice or three times, but I'm pretty particular or partial, I guess, to, um, Burt's Bees lip balm. I like, so I get real nerdy about the weight and the thickness, the viscosity. Mm. Like I really like my lip balm to be very specific and Burt's Bees. I don't really love their traditional minty one. To me, that is not where it's at. Um, I like the fruity ones. And so I really love the flavor of the strawberry, but I like the pomegranate, which I actually think smells a little bit like marijuana. It has like a really <laughs> um, faint, skunky smell to it that I kind of like. But every now and then I'm smelling it. I'm like, I feel like I just smelled marijuana drifting hey. up from my lips. And it gives it like a tiny little tint. Now, the funny thing about lip balm is only probably two of every three tubes of lip balm I go through, which happens fast for me is actually because I used it one out of every three times. It's because it went through the wash. I was going to say, or melted in the car or lost. So or melted I, in the car, I don't have yeah. a lot of experience actually getting to the end of a chapstick or lip balm. Cause I, I feel like they either melt, get gross or get lost. So I'll be really impressed if you like use it like to the end, like where like, you know, there's no more left. As lo so if it melts in the car, but then it cools off again and like for reforms itself back inside the, the container, I will still use it. It's I will still use it sometimes with my thumbnail. Like I'll dig it out of the oh, bottom when yeah. it's hardly any left. I will do that. The only time it doesn't get used if it is if it melts all over my clothes in the wash, then I can't put it back on my lips. No good. So Okay. Well, um, the Burt's Bees, we're going to link all of this up in the show notes, by the way. So Burt's Bees, strawberry or pomegranate is your go-to. Yeah. All but right. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to say pomegranate it has the slight edge. And is it always in the shape of like the traditional chapstick shape? Like none of the little pots? I or... think they may have a pot style, but I usually buy the tubes. Those are the most readily available. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I usually buy, but I think they may still have pots. Well, my first is literally like I've just been pumping the last few pumps out of this on my bathroom counter. So it is officially empty and I will absolutely buy it again. And it is just an all over body lotion. I use it after the shower and it's um, Neutrogena. I got it at Target. It's called Neutrogena, Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Body Gel Cream with, how will we say this, Megan? Hyaluronic, Hyaluronic. Acid. Yeah. So here's what I like about this as a, as a, it's just a lotion. It's a moisturizer you put on your legs after you get out of the shower. But what I like about it is some lotions, if you don't dry your skin off completely, then they feel real weird mixing with the little droplets of water that may still be on your body. And this one, I don't know if it's that hyaluronic acid or the fact that it's like hydro boost. It almost feels like it mixes or it combines well with becomes one with the water yeah, yeah. with the skin that's slightly wet. Yeah. And I really mm -hmm. like the feel of it going on uh, of it, like the way it goes on. And then I just try and put on like loose pajama pants or like a pair of shorts or something for just a little bit to just feel like it kind of seals in. 
And then it's my favorite. It's in a big blue bottle and it has a pump. That's also, I really appreciate a pump lotion. So I'm not like fiddling with a cap or lid. Um, and I will absolutely be buying that one again. Nothing fancy. Just find it at your local drugstore probably. I also love that um, whole line of Neutrogena. And I think if I'm, I'm pretty particular about body lotion. Yeah. For lots of the same reasons. I don't like it to do that thing where it turns into little like rolls. You know what I mean? Like little, Uh yeah, I really find that gross. But also I think it smells really good. Am I thinking of the right one? Like it has a really fresh, clean scent to it. It is a fresh, clean scent. It's nothing I, like I'm having trouble even thinking about it, but that's probably because by the time I'm out of a shower and I've shaved my legs and done all the things, I've got enough going on. Like my hair hopefully smells good. You already smell. Yeah, I I should already smell good. Like I just want that smooth, like I want to not feel dry. Once my skin dries, I want yeah. it to not feel like dry skin. So yeah, that one's been good. And, and it was Neutrogena, a big container and I used it all. That Neutrogena Hydra Boost, I believe has a whole line. And I think they have a little pot of like a facial moisturizer that's similar, like really light mm-hmm. and goes on like a gel cream. And I think they might even have like a sunscreen. Okay. So it's worth looking into the entire set. The entire Collect line. the whole set. It was not very yeah. beauty influencer of us. Um, I mean, mine is straight off the drugstore rack, but that's how we roll around here. We have some expensive yeah. products to recommend or some premium, I should say, not, not just expensive, but we have some more selective products to recommend, but also good old fashioned drugstore lotion. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies. But having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming a new sponsor today, Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Sarah, this might sound a little weird, but when my kids were babies, I actually really enjoyed changing diapers. It felt like a little time out to connect. Oh, yeah, Megan, I can totally remember that feeling of just kind of leaning in and enjoying a little moment in your routine. Yeah, but when my babies had diaper rash, it made the whole experience so much less fun for both of us. And back in those days, we didn't have great options for rash cream either. It was usually goopy, heavy and full of dyes and preservatives and other things I didn't really want to put on my baby's butt. Well, the creator of Dr. Mom Butt Balm, who is a mom and also a doctor, had the same experience, Megan, and she did something about it. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It's easy to apply, easy to remove, and you don't have to use a lot to protect your baby's skin. I really love the way this balm feels. It's almost like a high-end skin cream. Very nice, no strong scent, and definitely nothing like the diaper rash creams I used to struggle with. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. All right, we are going to have to pick up the pace, Megan, because we have a lot of products to talk through, a lot of empty bottles on our bathroom counter. But before we dive in, I just want to make a note about the fact that we work with a lot of skincare and beauty product sponsors. But this episode is truly the things we've bought for ourselves and used all the way up. So I don't know if listeners are curious. I think as a, as a listener, I would be curious. Like we do get sent product for free at the beginning of an ad campaign, for example. And so we get to try a lot of really cool products. The things we're talking about today, a few of them actually came from sponsor relationships, but we're talking about them because we became, I would you say like converted purchasers like yeah yeah. well and and we often will get oh I will say like I think only maybe two of the things I'm talking about were ever sponsors but even then you might get like one free oh yeah version of it at the beginning life they don't they don't just keep us in product forever and so it's it is a testament to us loving the product especially with some of the stuff that's a little higher end um, if we go back and spend 
our own bucks on it again and again and again. And that's what we're talking yeah, about and, today. And very often they've moved on and they, you know, the advertisers, are, <laughs> they've really, left us, but we haven't have. left them. That's exactly. The first one I'm going to bring up is exactly that, which is they might, you know, dabble in podcast advertising, dabble in the mom hour. We work with them for a few months and then they move along their merry way. And meanwhile, we're hooked for life and we're spending our, our money on their product. So that brings me to my first um, empty for this segment. And that is dermatology which has no vowels. That was challenging when we worked with them as a sponsor. So it's DRM. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. It's dermatology with no vowels. They were a sponsor uh, right before the pandemic in 2020 for not very long, but long enough to get me hooked. And the empties on my counter are their universal tinted moisturizer in an SPF 46. So it's an everyday moisturizing face with sunscreen and it's a little bit tinted, um, but not, not like a foundation. And then their retinol complex, which is a 0.5% those are two different products. I actually have like six of their products that I have purchased recently, but those are the two that I have purchased again and again. I will link them up. I don't even think we have a working promo code anymore, but they that sunscreen everyday moisturizer feels so good on my face and the tint is just enough and I just love them both. Well, my first one is also um, a previous sponsor, um, Osea. And, yeah. you know, I usually buy drugstore brand skincare or have, but this, I kind of feel like maybe that's over for me since I've been using Osea regularly. I have not gone back to, um, any, any of that, like over the counter stuff right. for, you know, serums and moisturizers. So the three, I also have now really branched out and have a whole bunch of their products. And I have a different line of their products at Eric's house that I keep at his house. Oh, nice. Um, that's different from my house because then, then I can mix it up a little bit. And so like, then I have more fun because I get to buy different stuff. But, uh, the ones that I've used up are the hyaluronic C serum, the advanced protection cream and the atmosphere protection cream. And they all come in really nice bottles. And those are the bottles I'm having a really hard time getting rid of. They're like, that you won't they're like frosted, you know, like that heavy duty frosted glass uh-huh. and they look really beautiful on my countertop. And I just love them. I think they smell great. I think they work great. And even though they are pretty pricey, a little goes a long way. Um, so I actually signed up with them as an affiliate. I've never shared it anywhere. I just like signed up because I like them so much, but we'll link to the stuff in the show notes. And then there's even a code. You can try Megan. I think you'll get 10% off at checkout. So there I you go. That. Their stuff smells yeah. so good too. Yeah. I love Osea. I don't have any Osea right now. It, all the empties are gone, but I do love them. <laughs> Um, okay. My next one is makeup related and it is my under eye concealer. And I think I've used this brand for, I don't know, 10 years. And I have tried some higher end concealers and I always go back to this one and I did just reorder it. It does last a long time. It's a tiny little bottle. It's L'Oreal Paris true match, super blendable concealer. It goes on with a little, um, brush. So it's, it's kind of liquidy as, cause I, there's some concealers that are like a, like a crayon almost, or, um, what is the word I am looking for when it's more like a soft crayon? Oh yeah. I know what you're talking about. Well, anyway, this one is more liquidy and it comes out just on a tiny little brush. So I don't use very much, but it is a lighter shade than like any other makeup I'm going to put on my face. Um, and I just feel like it blends really well and it's affordable and it's tiny. So I always travel with it because under eye circles even worse when traveling. Um, so yeah, that has been emptied many times. I am such a like on again, off again user of concealer because it's so hard. First of all, I don't get dark circles really or puffiness. So it would be really for lines or you know, just like if I get a weird like red mark under my eye or something, but it does make a difference. Like a a really good under eye concealer really can like brighten up your eyes. Um, but I just feel like they often you look like they're the wrong shade or they're Mm -hmm. cakey or they're, so maybe I'll try that one. Yeah. I think this is less is more with this one. I just use like a couple dots and then blend it with like my ring finger, like my fourth finger, whether or not I'm wearing a lot of other makeup that day, like doing a full face or, not, I don't wear it every single day, but if I'm, if I'm putting any makeup on my face, I probably use a little bit of this under my eyes. And I don't think I have terrible dark circles, but it just makes a little bit of a difference. It, it, yeah. It, it wakes. Yeah. 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 Well, the next one I have also was a, I think relatively short lived sponsor. And here's the interesting story. So it's native deodorant. So it's like a natural deodorant, not an anti, well, not, not an antiperspirant with like aluminum in it. I think it's got, um, some tapioca and starch and stuff like that to soak up your 
pit sweat. But, you know, when we were working with them as a sponsor, I definitely dabbled and I would use it when I thought to or when I felt like the stakes were low. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to yoga anyway. I'm going to sweat. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Or it's like it's I didn't really worry too much about stinking. I just thought, well, I'm probably going to sweat anyway. And I guess I don't care if I sweat more and it's going to smell really good, the sweat, because they smell really good. So I used it on and off like the whole time we were working with them and liked it. And then we haven't worked with them in a long time. And and one day I just it was the weirdest like decision I just made in a moment. I thought, you know, I think I'm just going to use natural deodorant from now on. I'm just really going to commit to it and see what happens. I'd thought about it. I'd kind of played with the idea. I would use it for a few days. And then, you know, you have to get kind of used to the feeling of having like slightly yep, sweatier it's pits. Yep. It is a little bit different, but it was probably now, I think it was right after I moved. Um, I just decided to toss out the deodorants that were like the more traditional antiperspirants and just decided to double down on native and bought a couple new scents. And now I have them all over the place and I have only been using them since. And it's great. Yeah. Like, I don't even notice that I have like slightly again. It's not like I'm just like gushing sweat everywhere. I just have slightly sweatier pits at some times than I otherwise would, but it dries and it smells delightful because yep. native smells so good. Um, I've been using the lilac and white tea. That's my new favorite scent. And I'm just like totally converted. But the funny thing is they're not paying us. Right. For me, <laughs> and it, it almost happened for you like a year <laughs> later or two years yeah. later after like being yeah. exposed to that product. Well, and that's true yeah. of like influence in general, or you hear about something or your friend uses something and you're like, eh, I'm not really sure about that. But then it comes back into your life when, when it's meant to yeah. be. Um, I, and when also, I was ready for it, I wasn't ready before. And now I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also am a full native convert and have been since we worked with them. I didn't even put that on empties. It's just the deodorant I use. And yeah, I think it's great. Same. Um, now I do have a question. Yeah. Is it really possible to use a deodorant until it's empty? Oh, I don't, you hate I mean, that. Can what one even do that armpit? You know, when that happens, yeah. like, I don't like that. It gives me like, it makes me feel yucky to think it's about Brody. And then at some point you literally can't go any further. Or like at some out. point, <laughs> unless, yeah, like unless you take it out and just mash it all over your armpit. Yeah. You actually can't use it till it's done. And uh, unless someone out there has a hack that they want to share with us, which I would love to hear. Because I hate throwing away that like 10% at the end of the tube. Well, I have a feeling people are going to come at us with plastic free options like deodorant bars and little like pots of charcoal. I'm not Mm -hmm. saying that's that's not like a never say never for me. My journey with plastic is like, oh, right. Like there are other ways to not throw away all that plastic, but I just haven't gotten there yet with deodorant. And there's nothing worse than when like the little left, the the 10% left like falls off and then you accidentally like, yes. scratch your armpit or there's a part that wears Ugh. too thin. Yeah. It's all terrible. Yeah. Probably like putting it in a little jar and then putting it on with like a, like a spackle <laughs> or like, you know what I mean? Like a yeah. spatula. I mean, that spackle, like <laughs> spackle with a spatula. Yeah. yeah. Or like one I'll of those next. big fluffy brushes, like they brush, um, shaving cream on at like the yes. barber shop yeah. or something and dust yes. your, dust your pits. All right. Well, here is another product I found out about through the podcast a couple of years ago, and I was not even in the market for something like this, but this is a hair product, shampoo, conditioner, and a styling product. I was very much using whatever was at Costco or the drugstore before that for shampoo and conditioner and styling cream, but the company is called Gemist. We worked with them so briefly that I was like, so sad. I was like, come back. I really like your product. Um, but it was short lived sponsorship on the mom hour and long live my hair because, um, I had a lot of issues with scalp, like dry scalp or flaky scalp, not dandruff in the traditional sense, but like itchy flaky sometimes like basically like scalp issues. And I've had that on and off my entire life so much so that I just kind of would control it, but get used to it and almost had assumed that it was just how my head was. And they have (laughs) a, um, scalp bar that once a week you like scrub your scalp with, it looks like a bar of soap that you keep in the shower. And then they have a shampoo and conditioner and you take their little quiz and they recommend it for you. Um, but with that scalp bar, I, I know this sounds like a commercial friends, but no one is paying me to say this. I literally have not had any scalp issues in the two years that I've been using. Gemist. And I have rebought and emptied 
um, a ton, but they last. You don't have to use very much shampoo and conditioner, like just like oh, truly a little bit. And I only wash my hair like twice a week. So I have only had to buy, rebuy maybe, maybe twice in two years. So that's pretty good. Well, that's good. And, and it's a good price too. It's like a really good yeah. value. I really liked it as well. Um, I just have been too lazy to go back through the um, process of, you know, figuring out my type again, but yeah, I really liked it. Yeah. Well, I just have one more in this category. Um, and I know that I said, I don't really do over the counter or like, you know, drugstore brand skincare anymore, but this one, I almost treat more like makeup. Um, and that is tinted mineral sunscreen from Sunbum, which is a sunscreen brand. And I do use their sunscreens as well, just like their body stuff. But this, I really use it as a foundation. It goes on mm. fluffy. That's the only way I can really describe it. It's almost like a, um, a whipped texture. Okay. And the tint is perfect. And it doesn't feel like it, like sometimes, um, sunscreens feel almost like they soak in in a creepy way that I don't love. And this doesn't really do that, but it also doesn't look, it doesn't look chalky at all. And it really works and it doesn't smell weird. So I'm just very, very happy with it. Like I'll use it all year round basically as a foundation alternate. I think I'm having a memory of you having this when we were together one time and me getting to try it. Sure. I did. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've been using it for probably two, two years now. So one of my faves. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar. They have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them. And I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician approved, super powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. All right, Sarah. Well, this one's rather pedestrian, um, but this is just kind of a fun story because... I really, I know we both really like fun household products and things that smell good to clean your house with, but I've always felt a little bit uninspired by dish soap. I mean, I do like Method and Mrs. Myers, but you know, that's, those are the only two brands that I get excited about at the grocery store. And I was wandering through Meyer a few months ago and saw an end cap for Grove uh, Grove Collective, I think is the full name of the company. I thought they were online only. I did not realize you could buy their stuff in stores. I wonder um, if that's new. And is it Grove it might Collaborative, be. maybe? Maybe it's collaborative. That sounds about right. Um, but it's all like natural stuff. Yeah. And it com- a lot of it comes in reusable packaging or you can like take, you know, you can empty the uh, refill into like a glass container or something. And I was a sucker. It was on an end cap. I couldn't help myself. Right. And I'd heard of the brand, but I had just never really bothered to purchase. I think maybe I had tried one or two things that somehow I got from somebody else, but I had never ordered to my memory from Grove. And I ended up buying, um, the orange rosemary was the dish soap. And I bought a glass bottle to put it in. Okay. And I went through it so fast. Not like I was, wasn't really doing more dishes. I probably overusing it, but I think I'm also, I think everyone's using it to wash their hands now a lot because it's in this nice dish soap. I, I mean, not, not to yeah. wash hands, but I just go through a lot. Right. Well, it's this, I mean, the, like the packaging is really pretty and it smells so good. Usually I would, you know, try something and then go back to a different brand or try something new, but I went right back and bought more of nice. the same orange rosemary from Grove. And now I kind of want to try some of their other stuff. They've got like um, little refills for floor cleaner and multi-purpose cleaner and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to try the whole collection. I love that. 
I love it. Um, well, here's one that is mostly just for the fun story and a little shout out to a boutique in Chicago. And it's like the opposite of an empty, but it's still a rebuy story. So Megan, when we went to Chicago last October, almost a year ago, we stayed in a cute Airbnb in Wicker Park or Bucktown. And remember how we went shopping for jewelry on the day of our photo shoot. We walked on division Avenue and went into cute boutiques that are like way too young and hip for us. The, the, um, impetus for the jewelry shopping was that I had had all of my jewelry besides like my wedding ring and a pair of studs and my watch. I had had it in a little bag that I had left at home. So for our photo shoot, I had nothing like no fun jewelry to wear. So we went into this little boutique called Gemini. I think it's just called Gemini on division in Chicago. And we both bought some stuff. You bought earrings and a necklace. I bought a couple pairs of earrings and a necklace. And the necklace I bought was really simple. It was a gold chain. And then it had these like two interlocking circles hanging from it. It was, it was an everyday necklace, but I got so many compliments. So I bought it that day, wore it in our photos. And then I wore it, you know, several times a week after loved it. Got so many people would just be like, Oh, I love your necklace. It was just interesting enough to kind of like be a conversation piece, but, but also simple enough to be every day. So fast forward to this summer, um, I was in Oregon and it fell off the bathroom counter. It was like under a towel and the whole thing slipped and the little interlocking circles like broke open. They were made of like almost like, um, I don't know, like a resin or something, not plastic, but like a material that was really hard until it broke and they broke off. And I reached out to the shop on Instagram because I found them because we had like tagged them and stuff when we went on this little shopping trip. Um, found them messaged with the shop owner. She's a podcast listener. I mean, she listens to our podcast or had because of that, like interaction we had back in the fall, which was like so fun and so flattering. I didn't think I'd be able to rebuy this necklace because it was very, if you recall, it was just like the type of boutique you walk into. It's a very mom and pop feel. It's not like there's like like, one of everything. There's one of everything. (laughs) It's made by local artists. It's not like you're going to pop onto like target and rebuy this lotion. But I messaged her. I was like, Hey, this broke. Do you still sell it? And she's like, Oh yeah, we still sell it. And you can buy it from our website. Like we do online sales. So I rebought, it arrived this week. I'm so happy. And it connected me to like a a local business and a listener. So that was like not at all an empty, except my neck was empty for a while. And it was such was empty and it was your heart fun rebuy story. (laughs) So yeah, I I love everything about that story. And that was such a fun little boutique. I would love to go back there sometime. Yeah. Um, And a fun little neighborhood that we were in Mm -hmm. when we were together. Well, okay. So the next one I have is kind of funny. Everyone knows I love tea and I talk a lot about black tea because I do tend to drink black teas in the morning, a English breakfast or some kind of a breakfast blend typically. But I got really into this herbal tea that I picked up in a little, uh, gift shop market. Like one of those markets where you go in and there's like fancy snacks and things like that. Um, teas and coffees and wine and fancy cheeses and stuff like that, mostly for tourists in Petoskey, Michigan, which is a very cute tourist town. And I bought a tea that is called, the name kind of cracks me up. It's called Wholesome Cleanse. Okay. And it's from a company called Flying Bird Botanicals, I think. And I was attracted to the tin. It's very, it's one of the ones I can't, I can't seem to get rid of. Keeping the empty. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Oh, that is a cute, and I'm looking at the picture. Isn't it cute? Yeah. It's yeah. Really cute. So I bought it. And it's got like, you know, ingredients that are supposed to be like good for like detoxing. And I noticed that the first few times I had it at bedtime, I would get up to go to the bathroom like six times at night. Like, I'm not even joking. I don't usually go to the bathroom after I go to bed. Maybe like once if I have a big glass of water right before bed, I might. I usually am very careful to make sure it's before I get too sleepy because I hate getting out of bed to go to the bathroom. I'll do it once. And then once I'm asleep, I'm fine. Well, I found out that the French word for dandelion root, which is the number one ingredient translates to pee the bed (laughs) because dandelion root is such a strong diuretic. So Eric told me that he's like, Oh yeah. Didn't you know that the French word for dandelion means pee the bed? I'm like, no, why would I know? No, I didn't know that. But now that explains a lot. So for a while I actually was like, but that must've been a fluke. Like it was just that I had too much liquid close to bed. So I kept Try to drink this tea close to bed because it's I just I like to put a little lemon in it. I just like the taste. Um, I like the idea that I'm just like detoxing the day away. Uh-huh. And 
I just have kept having to get up to go to the bathroom a bunch of times at night. So now I try to drink it in the afternoon. In fact, I had a cup when we started recording and now I'm starting to feel like I'm going to have to pee. You have to just get so up there you go. mid recording. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I know you'll give me a break if I need one, but it's just, it's kind of funny because I don't, I like herbal tea. I drink a lot of herbal tea, but I'm really hooked on this one. And so now I have two empty canisters. Eric actually got me a cute little like travel sized one that only fit like six tea bags. And I took that on vacation but now that one's empty and I just used up my last, my last bag. So what am I going to do now? Now you have more empties. I have two, two and more pee in my body. More pee. Okay. Um, first of all, in our outline listeners, it just says pee the bed tea. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't know where this was going to go. So that was a really exciting story. How could you, how yes. could you know? Um, and second of all, those tins, the cylindrical tea tins, um, are so cute. I wonder if anyone has come up with a really smart repurpose for those, you know, like a, like a pencil jar or something. I like, well, I also, that's what I thought. Pencil jar was the thing that yeah. popped into my head. Um, I actually would like to start blending my own teas so I could see maybe using tins for that yeah. or for, um, another thing I could do is, is use them to kind of mix up a variety of different kinds of teas that I want, like mm-hmm. to have in different stuff like stashed around the house, maybe in different areas, but I haven't thought much of beyond that. Like I haven't come up with anything. Yeah. All that. And I don't have like, you know, when I had like younger kids, maybe I would have had beads or right. that kind of crafty stuff. There's just not a lot of that sort of thing floating around. Anymore. And the whole like so. container hoarding is real. I mean, I, I fall prey to this too. I'm pretty discerning with jars. Like I, I don't have a problem. I'll just recycle a glass jar if I know it's that I'm not really going to use it, but I have an entire cupboard of glass jars and, and, and other types of containers. I'll think, Oh, this could be so good for something. And then it's like pretty soon, like you're just junking up your, your drawers right. with, yes, it like, is another potential. It is another way of, I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah. holding on to yeah. stuff you don't need. So, yeah. Um, well, here's another thing I just reordered because I have, uh, gone through it multiple times. Um, and it is noon, the hydration tablets that have never been a sponsor, but we've, we've put it out in the universe cause we both really like them. Our friend, Amy Clark first introduced us to noon years ago in a hotel room, but it's a, it's a hydration drink that you dissolve a tablet. So it just basically turns water into like slightly healthier Gatorade is how I think of it. You know, a lot less sugar and other stuff. Um, but the thing about noon, Megan, I don't know if you have found this. It comes in so many flavors and some of them are like, um, sports electrolytes. And some of them are like Mm -hmm. cleansing. Like they just, they have a lot of variety and I have usually. Some are caffeinated and I didn't know that until I accidentally. I don't think I've done that on accident, Mm -hmm. but shopping online for them had been like, okay, just which one can get to me fastest. They all taste fine. Like I really like, I do like having water that is a little bit flavored and it has made me hydrate a little bit better. Well, anyway, I finally about six months ago found a flavor that I'm like, yes, this is the flavor. I really like the best. I don't need any more variety packs. Cause remember we'd talk about, you'd get a variety pack of noon and then there'd be like some flavor that you're like, I don't want this one. It's grape or something. (laughs) So anyway, my favorite flavor is called citrus fruit and it's the, um, the top and the label are kind of like a bright coral, uh, color and they come in four packs. I just get them online and I just rebought. So that is a go-to for me hydrating in the afternoons. Okay. So the next one for me, um, I was influenced to purchase these by Shana from the mom edit. And this, it's kind of unusual for me to be influenced to purchase something like joggers. It's just not the kind of thing I would usually see on someone in an Instagram post and be like, you know what I need is a pair of, you know, $90 performance joggers. Right. <laughs> like, it's just not the way I am typically influenced, but she had it styled really cute. And then the way she talked about them, I was like, wait, this does sound perfect. Um, it was like, I think the premise was she was flying and I was about to go on a trip and it was kind of like, you can dress these up. So they look airport ready, yeah. but they're really comfortable and, and da, da, da. so I bought them and I have to say the hype was worth it. These are by far the most comfortable sweatpants I've ever owned, but the weight is perfect. They're like the right. I don't like pants that have too much heaviness going on. I don't want them to have a lot of bulk. These are nice and, um, they're nice and 
what's the word like slim like mm-hmm. slender fit yeah and so they have a nice low profile close to the body they hit at just the right spot on my calf they're not too short they're not too they don't come all the way down to my ankle bone they're they're just perfect and i just actually ordered another pair oh, so nice. they are not cheap so that was that's quite um saying something and did I you say the pair. brand i see it written in our outline but are it's you afraid Vuari, to say it <laughs> i think well Vuari, i don't know yeah Vuari, it's not a yeah. brand with which i am familiar I think I I did have a lady come up to me in a store and tell me like, oh, I have those at home. Aren't they the best? And I thought I just didn't even know anybody knew about this company. So I have heard influencer people talk about that company. In fact, I think I've heard on a podcast a conversation about how you pronounce it because now I'm having deja vu. So I think it's Vori, but um, Vori. Yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, But this was not planned. I'm going to piggyback on your joggers. I'm going to see your joggers and match you a uh, pricey jogger situation rebuy um i have had the lululemon they're called the align cropped jogger for at least four years in fact i've talked about them in episodes of the podcast when we've talked about like comfy pants in the pandemic um but the rebuy was that i was like okay lululemon stuff it literally never wears out like it 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 will last you forever and i take good care of mine i don't put it in the dryer and everything so i was like i'm just finally gonna buy a second pair of these joggers they've been my favorite forever. And the thing I like most about them is if I wear them to work out in the morning, I feel like I can stay in them all day and not feel like I'm just wearing Mm -hmm. tights. It's just a little bit less, a little more like a real pant and they have great pockets and everything. So I went online to, I was finally ready because they are also at least $90, maybe a hundred. And I was ready to rebuy after five years of wearing the same pair. And I saw that Lululemon has something that was new to me, which is called like new Lulu. And it's Lululemon resale of stuff that I think has been probably very lightly worn and returned. I mean, I don't think they're probably able to resell people's like five year old workout wear, but I'm thinking it's probably stuff that is returned to the store and they can't they can't slap tags on it and sell it as new, but they don't want it to go to a landfill. So it has like a sustainability focus of keeping workout clothes out of the landfill and the prices were like almost half of what was brand new. And because I knew exactly what I was looking for, like I knew the style and the size because it was a true rebuy. It was really easy to narrow it down. And it was all integrated into the main Lululemon website. It was just like a separate tab. I was so impressed. I think Brian's going to go on there and look for some of like a couple of his favorite, like long sleeve Lulu thing. So that was new to me. I'm going to check that out too, because I was just thinking the other day that I would love to start buying more gently used clothing, Yes, but I'm not great at like sourcing it. I don't feel like I had the time to do it in person and online. I just, if I feel a little out of my element and that's so smart of them, honestly, to kind of get a corner on the market of their own used stuff. That's just brilliant. It, and it was such a pleasant shopping experience because I like you, it's overwhelming. And if you can't see a picture, you don't know what the size is or what the condition is. This felt very on the up and up. There was nothing that felt grody about it. Like this is somebody's used Right. leggings or whatever. And when it arrived, the way it had been packaged and shipped was all as if it was brand new. And it's called like new Lulu. That's this. Um, and so I, for me, because I've worn their stuff for a long time and I know my sizes, it was so fast and easy to like narrow it down. And so I, I went in ready to buy at full price, these, um, cropped joggers that I have. And instead I bought Um, a pair of lightly used ones plus two other things, (laughs) because why not? Because all the prices were just so much better. It was great. That I am like, I've always wanted, well, not always wanted, but I've been wanting to try some Lululemon uh, yoga pants and just haven't gotten around to buying them. I guess it's, I mean, they're not cheap and I just haven't done it. And I think that would, I think I'll do that. And it's nice to know that they're used and I'm going to guess did not smell strongly of detergent. No, like sometimes buying used clothes. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I, that, do. Like I do. I do. Someone else's detergent smell. No, it would felt yeah. very profesh, whatever. However, yeah. however, these things received second life. I don't really yeah. know, but it felt it felt very clean, professional and like not sketchy. Well, all right. That is a nice plug for that. Yeah. Well, I just have one more. Um, and this is kind of like a whole category, but I'm just going to put a plug in for candles from TJ Maxx. So, um, I am not, you know, a huge TJ Maxx. Like I'm not one of those people who's there every week checking out the new collections, but just like maybe seasonally, like maybe four times a year, I'll think, you know what I feel like doing? I like going to TJ Maxx. I'm going to get me some candles 
I'm going to get me some kind of something from the decor section. Uh I'm going to maybe get me some weird food. They have like weird snacks and stuff. Uh And maybe some notebooks. Like, that's kind of the way it's going to go down for me. I don't know why it's making me laugh. Like a candle. Maybe someone in my house. (laughs) A weird snack (laughs) and a notebook. A weird snack. Well, it's kind of how it is. Maybe I need a new spatula. I'm going to go check out their, like, two, you know, two aisles of kitchen stuff. And maybe, like, someone in my house needs sheets. It's like that kind of thing. Like, it's like an overall, I just need a few things from a few different categories and maybe some seasonal stuff. And I get so much joy out of browsing their candle section because they seem like really high-end candles and they're probably not the most pure, you know, burning Mm -hmm. candles in all the, uh, all the land, but I think they're decent and they smell great and there's a million of them. So no matter what kind of smell you're in the mood for, you're going to find it and the price is going to be right. And they've got this um, sand and fog. It's like their must be their proprietary line. I'm not sure. Then there's one like sand and paws. I, I was a little confused. I thought maybe that was to like get rid of animal scents in your house, but I think actually the money just goes to animal oh, okay. organizations okay. or something. Um, I was like, does it smell like a dog? I'm very confused. But no, there's nothing in the scent that has yeah. to do with animals. Uh, but I just, I have now burned literally to the bottom of the container and talk about not being able to throw something away like oh, a heavy I, pretty I fully re like I get the wax out and I reuse those for pen jars and stuff can't like a nice candle yeah. and I also work yeah. really hard to get the stickers off I, I could be a little obsessive about that it's possible but I just have so many now mm-hmm. that I have burned all the way through so that just tells you that if it, it makes me happy like it yeah. makes me really happy to have a new candle sitting on my table and I'll have one in my kitchen and I burn them and I listen, I smell them and it makes me happy. And so if you want to do, you know, if you want to have like that kind of experience, if you want to have that kind of life, the life I have (laughs) burning candles all day, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, go to TJ Maxx. If you spend all your money on joggers. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And high end skincare. (laughs) Get yourself some burn candles. Some crap. Who knows what's in there? Just burn it. Burn it and breathe <laughs> oh my it in. Gosh, that's so funny. I'm realizing as you're talking and, um, you know, we recently talked on the podcast about kind of end of summer malaise when kids are home. I almost always wait till I have the house to myself to burn a candle, which if you're like a busy mom listening, like you're never probably alone yeah. in your house. But to me, it's become it's it's tied together with the idea of being able to wipe down my counters and have my house to myself and light a candle. But I realize that's probably working at cross purposes. It's like a, the chicken and egg thing. Like maybe if I lit a candle and like reclaimed my space at this end of summer, even yeah. when the kids were home, I'd be happy. So you've inspired me. But you know what? Your kids are at the age now where someone's going to want to mess with it. Yeah. Someone's going to say, mom, can I like put it out with my fingers or mom, can I put it out and then relight it? Can I blow it out? Can I relight it? Like that's so sometimes I don't even I'm a little jealous. Like I, I like kind of hoard the candle experience to myself because I don't want them soiling it sometimes, but you know, that's what my kitchen candles for the kitchen candles for me and the um, dining room tables for everyone. Got it. Okay. (laughs) Well, I am. I am inspired. It's too early for a fall visit to TJ Maxx, but maybe in a couple weeks, a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, my last one is also a one time sponsor of the podcast that I just reordered, like just like two weeks ago, um, a bunch more of their product. And that is Harper Wild. Um, both you and I have loved their I think it's called the base, which is like their everyday T-shirt bra. And I think we worked with them in like 2018. So I was thinking about this because I was thinking, okay, did this bra really last a long time? Or am I just remembering that? I I wore that bra like basically every single day. <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe not every day, but five of the seven days for four years straight. I think that's pretty good. And it didn't even really give out. It's just some of the elasticity in the shoulder straps um, because it, it'll convert to a racer back, which I love. Um, so some of the shoulder strap elasticity was starting to get a little stretched out and I just felt like it was time. Um, so it's not, it's not that it was empty, but I definitely wore the, you know, what out of my first Harper wild. And I later bought it in black, but this time I went and I got a couple other styles, including, um, a pair of their underwear, which I had never purchased before. It's like, they call it sleep shorts, but it's really like a boy short style brief, like a really comfy, soft brief. And then I got more of the base t-shirt bras, a couple of them. 
And I got the Bliss, the one that you told me about. That is, there's yes. two called the Bliss, but now there's the Bliss. And then what's the other one called? The Bliss. The Triangle. The Bliss yeah. Triangle. So it's okay. got more of like a scoop or not, not a sc- like a plunge, like a plunging neck. Yeah. Yes. Um. So I. Do you like that one? Oh, I love I it. I know we sent each other pictures of ourselves in our bras because <laughs> I, I just feel like I need to. I did your birthday. I know. It was the best birthday gift anyone ever gave me. Um, <laughs> When I bought it, so I had also been wearing my Hyper Harper Wilds. And I think I had two of the t-shirt bra, the base. And I, I don't know, I had one in like a nude and one in black. And they were starting to get not really worn out, but just a little stretched out. Yeah. And I was ready to get a new one. But when I went on their site, the Bliss was kind of like their bralette, but it was very like basic shaped, almost shaped like a, like a sports bra. It doesn't feel like a it's sports really bra. It doesn't comfy. smash you. I think you would call it like a weekend bra. Like it's, it's yeah. really soft and comfy. Yeah. Like buttery, buttery fabric. But this one is like that fabric, no underwire, but it has more of a traditional bra shape. So it doesn't flatten you out as much. And it, I felt like it was very flattering on. And so I took a picture of myself in it and sent it to Sarah because that's how we roll and encouraging Sarah to try one. And then you got one and then you took a picture of yourself and sent it to me. Um, but then weren't you like, you said you were super embarrassed because you thought it accidentally went to the wrong person or something. No, I think I, I missed the thread on that. No, I just was like, I felt really awkward sending it. I oh. felt like I was doing something wrong. Like, I don't know. I felt like I was sending like, <laughs> like inappropriate for sending like inappropriate pictures back yeah. and forth or something. It's really run just for office. us in our bras. Um, yes. But I will. Okay. The the one that we just mentioned, because it is the bliss triangle or whatever, we'll link all of this up. Um, I would say that for smaller chested ladies, um, it yeah, I think it does flatten, but it is really comfortable. It's like I wear it when I don't need the support of a sports bra, but I'm not looking for that T-shirt shape. I love it. I wear it under tank tops. I wear it like on yeah. the weekend, but I, um, I don't want to create an expectation. It, it doesn't that- have... <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't have that like lift and like um, it doesn't also have the there's no padding little bit there's of lining. No, yeah. There's no line. Yeah, there's no lining. So if at all, you're so. easily flattened, yeah. it will still flatten you. Mm-hmm. But I still love it. So, um, yeah, I think that was my that was my last uh, rebuy, and it was a big rebuy. I think I bought like four or five things in my last Harper Wild order. Happily, that reminds me that I'm gonna go buy another one of those in a different color. I think. Yeah. So thank you for the reminder. I got a like a really light pink. Like we would have called it ballet pink. Like um. I don't know. Very, very light. Pale pink is really pretty. Well, I think that wraps us up for today. Anytime we do an episode like this, Megan, with a ton of products, I always want to, you know, send people right to the show notes. So that's at themomhour.com or right where you're listening right now. Just look down and we'll have links to as many of these things as we can. Some of them, maybe we still have active promo codes if they are some, you know, a brand that we learned about through podcast sponsorship. So we will hook you up if we can. And coming up on Tuesday, we will be back with an all new episode. Yeah. And speaking of rebuys, if your family uh, enjoyed the Sonic the Hedgehog movie together, you can now pick up the Sonic the Hedgehog movie too. I love it. See what I did there? I do. (laughs) On Blu-ray and on digital. It's from Paramount Pictures. It's rated PG and it's out now wherever movies are sold. So check that out. Yeah. Check it out. And we will talk to you Tuesday. Hi friends, Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Tease Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Tease Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasemade.com to find all those episodes. The Tease Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Tease Made. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code themomhour20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%.